Since accidentally becoming a fairly prominent feminist, I've repeatedly experienced this phenomenon of male feminists who turn out to be not feminists. Sometimes they're revealed to be sex pests, uh, sexual harassers, abusers, or even rapists. And I imagine I must have been surprised the first time it happened to me, uh, but it's happened so often since that I really can't remember that reaction. Uh, because now it's just like, oh, that guy, he seemed like an ally, but he was actually a pile of garbage. Oh, yeah, okay, that checks out. So the most recent example is Andrew Cuomo, the most recent prominent example, I should say, because it's probably happening all the time. But Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York, uh, now former governor of New York, I know it's frowned upon to say things like, I never liked that guy anyway, because it belies the fact that a lot of terrible people are talented in certain ways, which allows them to hide their awfulness, a la Bill Cosby. But God, I never liked that guy. You know, he mishandled COVID cases, especially in nursing homes, um, tried to hide the data while people like Jimmy Fallon tried to make Cuomo sexual a thing. And it was all just extremely gross. But apparently people thought of him as a feminist ally because in 2019, he signed legislation designed to improve protections for women facing workplace sexual harassment. The law mandated anti-harassment training, extended the statute of limitations, and declared that accusers do not have to prove they were treated differently than other workers. It also lowered New York's standard for sexual harassment to include unwanted conduct that rises above the level of petty slights and trivial inconveniences. Literally the next day after signing that bill in a big signing ceremony, Cuomo sexually harassed a female member of his security detail. And that was just one minor incident. The New York State Attorney General compiled 74,000 emails, texts, and other pieces of evidence and interviewed 179 different witnesses to show a repeated pattern of behavior, like Cuomo asking his assistant if she had ever had sex with an older man or if she had any body piercings, or Cuomo randomly asking strange women if he could kiss them, which I can only imagine is a severe and perhaps purposeful misunderstanding of the importance of consent. So what's going on here? Why do so many men seem interested in helping women, but in actuality, they are sexist assholes? Well, a study that was just published in Personality and Social Psychology Bulletin may be able to shed some light on this situation. In Curvilinear Sexism and Its Links to Men's Perceived Mate Value, a team of psychologists at University of South Florida examined the link between hostile sexism and benevolent sexism. Most people are familiar with the hostile type of sexism. Just click a random thread on Reddit and you'll find some good examples like oh, here's a guy who openly states that he thinks all women only think about stupid flighty shit. Yeah, that's sexism, hostile sexism. But benevolent sexism also exists. That's the kind of sexism where someone thinks women are, for instance, delicate creatures that must be protected by men, or women are too pure to get their hands dirty, or women possess magical intuition beyond the purview of men. In fact, I made a video about a particular brand of benevolent sexism just last year in reply to an article that argued that female world leaders were somehow better than male leaders at dealing with the pandemic because they're women. What differentiates a man who displays benevolent sexism from one who displays hostile sexism? To find out, these researchers gave hundreds of men a survey meant to judge how sexist they are on those two measures. And by the way, quick point of note, women can display both of these types of sexism as well, but this study just looked at men. Um, you can take this survey if you'd like. Uh, I did, and shockingly, I am 0% sexist, benevolent, or hostile. Um, 
But it, it includes statements like, no matter how accomplished he is, a man is not truly complete as a person unless he has the love of a woman. And women should be cherished and protected by men. That Those are to gauge benevolent sexism. And then there are statements like, when women lose to men in a fair competition, they typically complain about being discriminated against. And that was to gauge hostile sexism. As you can see, these statements are kind of obvious, to me at least, which is why I got, you know, you are zero sexist, even though I'm sure I have some amount of sexism in me. And if the questions were subtler, maybe it could tease that out. But no, these questions are designed to find like really obviously sexist people. The researchers then asked the men to report on their perceived value as a mate, like, do women like you? Are you attractive? Do you make money? Are you funny? You know, that that sort of thing. And their relationship history. What they found was that the main difference between men who were benevolently sexist and men who were hostile is that the benevolent sexists fuck. Or at least they think they have a good chance of fucking. The men who had lower self-esteem, who gave themselves a lower mate value, they thought they were ugly, you know, low value, too low value for women to show interest in, they dropped the benevolent sexism and went straight to hostility. In other words, researchers discovered incels. It's interesting to look at the study in light of Cuomo's current status. Uh, back in 2019 and 2020, Andrew Cuomo thought he was the shit. Flirting with complete strangers, allegedly groping his executive assistant's breasts, trying to convince other employees to play strip poker with him. And at the same time, he took center stage to accept credit for rescuing women from sexual harassers. Like, he didn't even invite Alessandra Biaggi, the female senator who co-authored that bill, to the signing ceremony of the bill. He was a benevolent sexist. The Cuomo of August of 2021, though, no longer fucks. And as this study predicted, he dropped the benevolence and went on for full-on hostile sexism as he tried to discredit the 11 women who have accused him of predatory behavior. Like, oh, he kisses and hugs people all the time. These women just overreacted. The assistant who said she felt uncomfortable with his increasingly personal questions about her sex life just didn't understand the situation because she was previously a victim of sexual assault. And you can't really believe what sexual assault survivors say. They don't really, you know, understand reality. So there it is, you know, remove a benevolent sexist perceived mate value and discover the hostile sexist lurking just under the surface. And as of today, this particular now hostile sexist gave up and removed himself from office. So well done, everyone. Um, let's see if he has identified his particular problem and is working to better himself. I said on national TV to a doctor wearing PPE and giving me a COVID nasal, nasal swab, you make that gown look good. I was joking. Obviously, otherwise I wouldn't have said it on national TV. Oh, well, I guess you can't have it all.